Hi everybody, today I am bringing you 10 secrets to becoming a professional ballet dancer. These are not only 10 secrets, but they're also 10 truths. So it's not gonna be, you must have perfect feet, you must have perfect legs, you must have perfect turnout. Nope. This is the reality of the situation. For those of you that know me, I was a soloist with the New York City Ballet, so I have been there, I have lived it, I have done this career, so I can really let you in on what it actually takes to become a professional dancer. So let's get into it. Number one is self-motivation. And this is what I learned, especially transitioning from SAB, School of American Ballet, to the New York City Ballet. You have to be able to self-motivate. When you're a student, they push you, they nurture you. Once you get to the company, oftentimes company class, someone will just give combinations, there won't be corrections. There are days when you have rehearsals all day long and you have got to find motivation from somewhere. You might be standing in the back understudying and feel like your life has come to a complete halt. So you've got to learn to self-motivate because if you're not self-motivating, the next person is gonna pass you by. Someone else is gonna get that part. Someone else is gonna take that spot that you wanted. So you must learn how to find it within yourself, even when you're having a bad day, and start it now, dancers. Start it now. It takes a lot of mental strength to be a dancer. So that's the number one, if not the most important thing to becoming a professional dancer. Learn how to self motivate. Number two is a hard truth and that is you need proper training and you need a lot of it. A couple of classes a week is just honestly guys not going to cut it. You need to be dancing five to six days a week. It needs to be ingrained in you. You need to keep up your technique that way. Um, if you're just dancing a couple times a week or you're doing one full class and some private lessons, you need more. Because as a professional, you're gonna be dancing all day long. You've gotta have the ability and the muscle memory and the technique to keep that up. So if you're only getting a couple classes a week right now and you wanna be a professional dancer, I highly encourage you guys to start supplementing your training and get more. Five to six times a week, good ballet classes. When I was a student, I had to go to several studios to make that happen. I did some private lessons. And then once I went to School of American Ballet, that was taken care of for me. But you need to be getting good, solid training. You need to be able to get through multiple classes a week with no problem because that really will set you up for becoming a professional dancer. All right, number three goes along with this, and that is correct technique and placement. And what I mean by this is no cheating. Start it now. You're not gonna build the proper strength and technique if you're trying to get your leg up, but your hip goes up at the same time, you have to lean, you have to bend your supporting leg, for example, or to turn, you you know go from a parallel and you know, just to get the turns. That's not gonna serve you well. Companies, directors, choreographers are looking for dancers who have proper technique and placement. They would much rather see the leg at 90 degrees perfectly turned out, hips level, lifting up, than a leg up with the hip up, bent over. The good news is you can start fixing that now. So when you're taking your ballet classes, really pay attention. I don't care if the girl next to you has got her leg wrapped around her head, don't do it if it means you gotta lose your placement in order to get there. Make sure you're turning with proper form, jumping with proper form. I know as a young dancer, you guys wanna get those legs up and get those turns, but it will serve you well if you don't cheat now because either you won't get hired or you'll have to break bad habits later and it will actually slow you down. So make sure you are not cheating in class, you're doing everything with proper placement and that will really set you up for a good professional career. All right, number four is another hard truth for the ladies out there. You must be getting adequate point work. 15 minutes at the end of every class is just not gonna cut it. You should be able to do center, if not the whole class on point. I know a lot of people don't do bar on point, but you should at least be able to do the entire center in point shoes with no problem. Turning, jumping, adagio. Especially if you wanna be in a classical company, point shoes are a necessity, they are a regular thing, and if they feel like foreign objects on your feet, it's gonna look like it in your dancing. So ladies, start doing as much point work as you can, bar on point, make sure those shoes are getting on for center. Now I'm not talking about those of you who just started on point. Um, those of you who have only been on point a year or two, that's okay, you'll get there. You need to take your time with that. But if you are a more advanced dancer and you've been on point several years now, 
I highly encourage you to start doing more because point shoes need to become second nature. That's how you know you're ready to be a professional dancer is when your point shoes are second nature. You can throw them on and do the class with no problem. All right, number five, your health. Yes, we have to look good in a leotard. We have to have a certain aesthetic. That is the reality of ballet. However, you don't just stand there in a leotard. It's not enough to look good in the leotard. You've got to be able to get through a full day of rehearsals and performances five to six times a week. While you need to be thin, you've got to be strong. You've got to be in great health. And that is the hard thing about being a ballet dancer. You have to look thin like a model, make it look easy, yet have the strength of an athlete. So guys, I highly encourage you to start focusing on your health. Food equals fuel. You've got to have the fuel for a full day. You've got to have the energy. You've got to be able to get through multiple rehearsals and then peak at night when the performance is. That's another hard thing about being a professional dancer. You dance all day long, but your best dancing has to be at 8 p.m. So what I encourage you to start doing, in addition to just eating well, pay attention. Are there certain foods that give you more energy than others? Are there certain foods that after you eat them, you feel tired? or make you feel bloated or achy. For me, it's gluten. I know full well gluten affects me like no other. I feel awful after eating it. I feel tired after eating it. I feel like I blow up like a balloon. So start paying attention to your body. It's not just about eating salad. Figure out what works for you. It's not gonna be the same thing that works for the girl next to you. So start paying attention to your health, get adequate sleep, drink enough water, take care of your body, Figure out what foods work for you and the ones that don't and really focus on your health because again, to get through the crazy schedule, you have to treat yourself like a professional athlete. All right, number six is artistry. Don't forget about the artistry, guys. Choreographers, directors, company, people are looking for dancers who can make more out of the steps because dancers nowadays are so good and so talented and they could do so much that now the bar is higher. So you've got to start making more out of just your technique. Don't go across the floor like this and do a beautiful triple pirouette that looks with a face like this. Make something out of it. Artistry is not just about musicality, but it's also about in-betweens, placing your feet. You know, beautiful grand jeté does not count if you turn in your glissade. Know what I mean? So start paying attention to how you do the steps, be right on the music, Choreographers and directors cannot stand dancers who are not on the music. They will immediately disregard you. So make sure you're on the music, make something more out of just your technique. Because again, there are so many talented people now. So you've gotta be the one in the room that stands out at an audition. How do you do that? If everybody can do a triple pirouette, it's how you do the triple pirouette. It's how you do the step. So really pay attention to artistry. Don't forget it, guys. It's so important because the purpose of being a professional dancer is performing. That's your ultimate goal. That is what you are going to be hired for. So they need to see what they're going to see on the stage in class. Don't save it for the performance. It might be too late. Start paying attention to your artistry in class. All right, number seven, you have to be smart. I'm not talking about book smart. Goodness knows I couldn't get an A in physics to save my life. What I'm talking about is being smart in knowing how to pace yourself, knowing choreography quickly, just being aware of the people around you. That kind of smart. Dancer smart. Try and get those combinations quickly, guys, because that will lead you to be able to pick up choreography quickly. If you're that understudy in the back and they say, all right, so-and-so's out, who knows it? You got to be the one that knows it and that could give you the, the big break. So many dancers got their big breaks by being that understudy that knew the choreography. So really pay attention, be smart in knowing again how to take care of yourself, knowing when to push through pain and when not to push through pain. You know, pushing through pain is not necessarily the smartest idea. Is it just an ache? Is it an actual injury? Are you gonna make it worse by pushing through? So know your body, be smart about it, and get that choreography quickly. It will serve you like nothing else. All right, number eight is something you probably might not have thought of, and that is efficiency. And what I'm talking about efficiency is when you have a 12-hour dancing day, you've gotta know when to push, 
when to slow down, how to make the most out of everything. You've got to know how to warm up before a performance so you don't totally wipe out before you even get on the stage. You have to know, okay, if I'm feeling tired, can, how can I push through this in an effective way, in an efficient way, so I won't hurt myself, so I'll be able to do my other three rehearsals for the day. Being efficient as a professional dancer is something you learn as you go. You'll learn you can't go for broke 24 seven as a dancer. Yes, you have to work hard. Yes, you have to self-motivate, but you also have to be efficient. If you're interested, I will do a performance warm up bar video for you guys. Let me know in the comments below because it's important before a performance not to do everything. You've got to know how to push yourself when to push and when to pull back. It took me a really long time to learn, so I hope I can help you guys with this before you get there. Um, but it is something you will learn as you go, but start now. All right, number nine, confidence. You can be the greatest dancer in the world, in the room, but if when the director walks in, you run to the back, they're never gonna see it. You've gotta have enough confidence in yourself to be seen. Because remember, directors are people too. If they don't know about you, if they don't see you, they're not going to cast you. I'm not talking about being pushy and standing at the front of the room and being right on top of the teacher. I'm talking about not shrinking back when it counts. You know what I mean? Have you ever done that? When, you know, normal class, you're great, somebody walks in, your parents are watching, and you all of a sudden cannot dance, you cannot want to be seen, and you run to the back. Reality, guys, is that that's how you're going to get parts, is by being seen. So start working on your confidence. And part of that is knowing that no one is perfect. It's never going to be perfect. If you give a perfect performance, quit. You're done. Because it's never going to get better than that. Nobody gives a perfect show. Nobody has a perfect class. There is always something to work on. And once you get that mentality, then your confidence will increase. So when that person walks in the room, you've got to be able to still have enough confidence to deliver so you get seen. Because guess what? How it works in a professional company, guys, when a choreographer is coming in to cast a new ballet and to choreograph a new ballet, guess what they do? They watch class. So it's not just about the show. You've got to be able to really give a good class and have enough confidence in class so that choreographer will see you. Sometimes choreographers are flying in, they start the next day, they don't have time to watch the performance. So start viewing your classes as that. Make yourself do the combination more than once. Make yourself go to the front of the room so you get seen because that is really important in a company. Don't get lost, especially in big ones. If you've got a company of 100 people, don't get lost. Have enough confidence in yourself to be seen. All right, my final tip is definitely the most important. You have to have the passion. You've got to love what you're doing. You've got to love ballet. You've got to live and die for your career because it's so hard. Everything I just mentioned, it's hard. Again, it's that career of being a model and looking beautiful and making it look easy, but also having to have the strength, the power, the endurance of an athlete. You've got to love it. Otherwise, you're never going to be able to stick with it. You're never going to be able to succeed. Being a performer and being a professional dancer, the glamorous part is like 8% of the time, not even 10% of the time, is that little show at the evening. The rest of it is blood, sweat, and tears. The rest of it is studio work. It's pushing yourself. It's fighting tooth and nail to get better, to be seen, to get to that 8% of the time. So in order to do that, you've got to love it. So on a hard day, dancers, remember why you started dancing in the first place. Remember the passion you had as a kid. Why did you start dancing? Ask yourself that. Literally, why am I here? Why do I love this? Why do I want this? And it will get you through some really, really tough days. So those are my 10 tips. Again, not your conventional feet and turnout and jumps. We didn't even talk about that. Because at the end of the day, those things are not as important as these. Yes, you have to be able to get on your shoe. You have to be mildly turned out. But young dancers get so caught up in that that they forget all the actual important stuff. So I hope I highlighted that for you guys today and you could actually see what it truly takes to be a professional dancer. So if any of these topics are confusing for you, let me know and I will do a separate video on them if you are interested. If you want me to break it down a little bit more, um, if you're curious about something, leave me a comment. I will be happy to oblige 
further because these are really important, you guys, really important. If you enjoyed this, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos. If you missed my videos on performance essentials, kind of going along with this, it's right there. You can click it to watch. Love you guys so, so much, and I will see you next time.